Seven things you probably didn't know, you need to know. I'm Jamie East and this, this is the Smart Seven. Good morning, it's Tuesday the 28th of September and it's Good Neighbour Day. And a big happy birthday to Bridget Bardot, Jon Snow, Hilary Duff and Naomi Watts. The energy crisis continued on Monday with 10 fuel companies forced to issue a joint statement reassuring the public that there was plenty of fuel at the refineries. That may be somewhat missing the point as BP revealed that a third of its forecourts now have shortages, while independent retailers said two-thirds of their members have run dry. Environment Secretary George Eustace was still pointing the finger at, well, you basically. There isn't a shortage. There have been some shortages of HGV drivers getting petrol to four courts. The cause of these current problems is that um, panic buying episode. Uh, and the most important thing is for people to start uh, you know, buying petrol as they normally would. The government's placed a pool of 150 army tanker drivers on standby, but they hope supplies will return to normal over the next few days. The government's also extended special driver licences needed to transport fuel. Mayor of London Sadiq Khan says the whole thing's a shambles. We knew in 2016, by the way, there'd be a shortage of haulage drivers uh, when Brexit happened. The government, yet again, have taken their eye off the ball and it's ordinary people who are suffering. The Labour Party conference continued in Brighton on Monday with a high-profile departure as shadow cabinet member Andy MacDonald quit on a point of principle over the £15 minimum wage. And to have to do this is just has been heartbreaking. It's been the most difficult thing I've ever done. He also accused Keir Starmer of making the party more divided than ever, but on the conference stage, Shadow Chancellor Rachel Reeves was setting out a new approach to tax under a Labour government. We will make the tax system fairer, ensuring that the burden isn't just falling on the wages of working people, but that those at the top pay their fair share too. She also pledged a significant annual investment into making the UK economy cleaner and greener. An additional £28 billion of capital investment in our country's green transition for each and every year of this decade. I will be a responsible Chancellor. I will be Britain's first green Chancellor. There were 37,960 new cases of COVID-19 yesterday and 40 additional deaths announced. As the UK's booster programme rolls out, the US has also begun a booster campaign which saw Joe Biden get the shot live on TV. Pfizer CEO Albert Baller told CNN that he thinks the end is in sight, even with potential new variants, as the vaccines also improve. I agree that within a year, I think we will be able to come back to normal life. I don't think that this means the variants will not be continue coming, and I don't think that this means that we should be able to live our lives without having vaccinations, basically. But um, that's again, remains to, to be seen. And at the weekend's Global Citizen event in New York, Meghan and Harry popped up with a message about the importance of providing vaccines for all across the world. My wife and I believe the way you're born should not dictate your ability to survive. Especially when the treatments exist to keep you safe. So, Global citizens, do you think we should start treating access to the vaccine as basic human rights? A Brooklyn court found singer R. Kelly guilty on Monday on charges of racketeering and eight counts of sex trafficking. The trial lasted for six weeks and saw the jury deliberate for nine hours. He was accused of using his wealth and fame to facilitate the abuse of women and children, luring in victims with promises to help them in their music careers. The 54-year-old's been the centre of allegations for 30 years, having previously been charged and acquitted on child pornography charges. He still faces charges in Chicago, Illinois and Minnesota. He'll be sentenced on May the 4th, 2022 and could face life in prison. Lawyer for his victims, Gloria Alred, says he deserves to be locked up for a long time. I have been practicing law for 47 years. Of all the predators that I have pursued, however, Mr. Kelly is the worst. These were not May-October relationships. These were crimes against children and some adults. Still to come on the Smart 7, Man City face Messi and Will Smith goes exploring. Right after this. You're listening to the Smart 7. If you're enjoying it, you might also like the Smart 7 Island Edition. Just search and follow us on your favourite podcast platform. Three, two, one.
There was one Premier League game on Monday night as a last gasp equaliser saw Brighton draw one all at Crystal Palace. All eyes are on the Champions League tonight as Liverpool take on Porto and Man City travel to face French side PSG. The addition of Lionel Messi to a side which is already bristling with talent hasn't been seamless, as manager Mauricio Pochettino admits. Paris is under pressure always. Um, the most important is uh, that we are so happy with the squad that we, we build. Uh, that now we need time. Man City manager Pep Guardiola knows his team will have their hands full. They have the quality. So at the end, the talent, the talent cannot be stopped. We cannot put the, the pressure in one player to solve the, the, the skills and the talents the players that they have so we have to do it as a team Sunday night saw the 74th Tony Awards take place in New York Broadway was particularly hard hit by the pandemic with some shows only reopening over the last few weeks the awards mark the biggest successes of the 2019 to 2020 season with Moulin Rouge winning 10 including best musical one unexpected fan on the red carpet was Loki, better known as Tom Hiddleston, who was really quite excited to see the drama in person. I think the fellowship of the, the community is what I'm looking forward to most. There are performers in there who I'm in awe of, who do things that I can't do, and they do them every day of the week, eight shows a week, and I think it'll be a huge celebration of, of live theatre, live performance. We've missed it, and I think everybody else has too, so it's, it's lovely that it's back. Most middle-aged men take up a hobby right, whether it's marathon running, hello, this weekend actually if you want to sponsor me, or if you're Will Smith, maybe it's ticking some things off your bucket list in a dramatic over-the-top National Geographic documentary, exec produced by multi-award winning director and producer Darren Aronofsky. It's called Welcome to Earth, it's on its way to Disney Plus this December, it looks rather good. We think we know our planet, but there's still a secret world to be discovered. If you go to the right place, with the right guide, you just might find a portal into it. And we need the helmet because the volcano spits rocks up in the air as if this helmet's going to do something. <laughs> We're one of these big rocks. This has been The Smart 7. Wherever you're listening, do us a favour and hit the follow button. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Have a great day. Written, produced and published by Daft Dogs.